I, they told me to sit down and shut up, so I guess I better do it. <laughs> I, I forgot that we changed things around this morning. We changed the order of service. Uh, first of all, we'll do, we're going to do the announcements first. And, uh, of course, this is Father's Day. I want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Uh, and then uh, Wednesday evening, we do prayer service. And then also, uh, that'll be at 7 o'clock. And then the Community Activities Committee will meet after the service. Also at 6.30, the Worship Warriors will be in the Family Life Center. And uh, then on the 26th, which is the last Sunday and next Sunday, birthdays, anniversary, fellowship after the evening service. So we're looking forward for that. And uh, if you have any old pictures or history on Fairview Baptist Church, you need to start bringing those in and giving it to uh, the ladies' uh, Sunday school class over here or, or to the committee, homecoming committee, because we're going to celebrate the 100 year of this church's existence. And uh, we need to start getting that in and start planning now. Uh, first thing you know, the third Sunday in October will be here uh, before you know it. So start getting your old pictures and history uh, together and bringing it in. Also bring a, a, a non-perishable food items for the food pantry. There's a, there's a container out front there to put that in where we can take care of the families that are less fortunate uh, than we are. <clears throat> I want to say we're glad to see Miss Peggy back home. She's been down in Georgia and uh, she uh, she's back here for the first Sunday in a while so we'll wish her back this morning. And all of you that are visiting, we're, we're, we're glad that you have chosen to worship with us here uh, today. Yes. Okay, the youth are planning a bowling out Friday night. Can anybody go? If you got the money, you can come. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay, anybody had a birthday the past week? Nobody had a birthday. How about a, uh, Anna? Oh, I didn't see you, Ann. I'm sorry. Come on down. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand, Ann. Let's stand and say happy birthday to Ann. in the past week. Okay, Doris and James. Let's say happy birthday. Happy, birthday. happy anniversary. Doris and James is about like that. Middle ways. 53. 53 years.
truth, and I don't know if they told the truth or not. <laughs> I don't think we ever give Jesus our all. Amen? Amen. We're going to take a moment to have our fellowship. And, uh, so go around and shake somebody's hand. Uh, check our visitor's hand. Tell them you love them. And, uh, and invite them back to our church. Amen? song will be an offertory hymn, page 204. We're going to sing all three verses. Ushers come on the third verse.
that's one thing we can definitely say if, if, if Christ has you, He's got you wrapped in His hand, can nothing take that away. Amen. Our last song today will be page number 64, first, second, fourth verse. Choir go down on the last verse. down screen in the video for you to watch but just kind of listen to the words I may mess it up terribly but just listen to the words
you, Michelle. You did a great job. Take your Bibles this morning and turn over to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I'll be reading one verse. Verse 1. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 1. Talk about this morning for the next few moments about true fathers. The psalmist said, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. The first thing that I want to say is that, that your responsibility is to have a relationship with God. <clears throat> Very important. When you get to thinking about it, you need to be as much like God as you possibly can as you lead your family. You are not only to be a loving husband, but you are to be a loyal father also. It's very important that your wife and your children know that you're under subject to God. And let me say this, and I'll say more about this in a moment. You're not only to love your wife, but you're also to love your children. I want to give you six important thoughts concerning a father. One, a father should be like God. God has authority and He has given the Father authority. Now gentlemen, before you stick your chest out, that doesn't mean you are a dictator. God gives you the authority to lead your family. Secondly, God should be, the, the Father should be saved. Third, a Father should be a man of prayer. Fourthly, a Father should be, it should be a, a man of patience, love, and understanding. Fifthly, a father should be the head of the home. That's biblical. And sixth, father should be the protector, the provider, and the presider. And it is those three points that I want to dwell on just for the next few moments. Father, I want you to understand that you are the protector. I want you to hear this. If you do not protect your home, then Satan will destroy it. Now, very few fathers fail to provide physically for their family. You would have to look for a long time to find that man that if someone came into his home threatening his children and his family, that he would not protect them. He would protect them even if it meant death. 
And I am reminded of what Jesus, uh, what the writer of Ephesians says, that we are to love our wives as Jesus loved the church. Well, how did, what, what happened to Jesus? He gave his life for the church. And a husband and a father loves his wife and his family enough that if it need be, he would die for them. But won't you understand that physical dangers are not the only thing that threaten our families today. The spiritual dangers that confront our homes are overwhelming and it is up to the Father to provide spiritual protection for the family. You say, well, Brother Jackie, how can I protect my family spiritually? Glad you asked that, because I'm going to tell you. First of all, you must set an example of spiritual strength before your family. If Satan can get a foothold in your life, he will have a foothold in your family life. You need to be committed to the Lord. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. What we need to do, fathers, is arm ourselves with the spiritual armor that uh, the writer of Ephesians talks about in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Then secondly, hear this, we, be sure that your family not exposed to dangerous teaching. Be sure the church that you go to, whether it's this church or any church, be sure that that church is teaching the believers the word of the living God. If the church you go to does not preach the word of God, go somewhere else that is preaching the word of God. Then thirdly, train your children in the truth. Take the authority that God has given us, given you. And listen to this. Determine what kind of reading that your children are reading in their rooms. And I thought about this. The children of today all have a uh, what do you call that thing? That kind of phone. IPhone. I was about to say iPhone, but then iPhone. iPhone devices. Devices. Yeah, there you go. And I guarantee you, not many parents today knows what those children are reading behind closed doors with the with the uh, Facebook and with Twitter and all those kind of things. Now, I'm speaking that from experience because I've noticed my son and, and his two daughters, and I guarantee you, they don't know what those girls are reading behind those closed doors. Listen to this. Tell them the kind of reading that can be done and cannot be done. That's your authority. And set the rules concerning dating. You fathers that's got your children, your girls are both ready to date. And if they're not ready to date now, they will be one of these days. And I'll guarantee you, they're going to be looking at the boys. The boys are going to be looking at them. <laughs> Franklin's got so many girls, he's ain't made me over there. <laughs> Tell the children what they can do and what they can't do. Tell the children what time to get in from a date. And listen to this. Tell them who they can date. 
Because if you're not careful, your children will be will be drawn astray. <laughs> I'm sorry, Skyler. <laughs> All right, now listen to this. Spend some time with your family. Play with your family. Pray with your family. Set the right example before your family. Be consistent in your life before your family. And lead the whole family in worshiping of the Lord God. That's a father's responsibility. Down through the years, I've seen so many fathers pull up to the church uh, front and let their children out and go back home and they come back when church is over with and pick the children up. That father and those fathers are not leading their family spiritually. You say, well, preacher, how can I protect my family spiritually? Well, you can look to God you can depend on God. You can worship God. You can love God. And seek the face of God. That is how you can do it. Then secondly, Father, you are the provider. All of us know that as a father, we ought to provide Physically or materially. Now, in the day and time that we're living in today, both father and mother possibly work. Our culture has made it so that uh, two people have to work to have the things that, uh, that they want to give to their family. You may not give them all that they would like, but you give them everything that you're able to give them. And the Bible says this that the way it this is the way it should be in First Timothy chapter five verse eight. This is actually what he's actually saying: a man does not do his best to provide the material things of his family commits a great sin. In the words of the Bible, he is worse than an unbeliever, and no greater charge can be brought or hurled against anyone. But the father's duty to supply for the family does not stop in the material things. My throat is getting hoarse. I sung 99% a while ago. And I've strained my voice. That's why I'm talking like I am and trying to hold my voice where the, you know, last through this sermon. I could be just a little louder, but I won't. But uh, I sung 99% and, and, and if you're not quite sure, uh, it will happen to you. But but you don't stop with the material needs. Listen to this. You must provide mentally. We don't think about that. We must teach our children to respond to authority. And that's one thing that I'm finding in society today that the fathers are not teaching their children about authority. We ought to teach them that the men in blue are there to protect them and them not to abuse them. The boy or girl who has learned to love and obey his parents has taken a great step forward obeying and trusting God. And God makes it very clear that dis discipline is vital. Listen to Proverbs 29, 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Thank you. Listen to this. It's easy to be a permissive father. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You're not your children's buddy. Mm -hmm. 
You're their father. Right. If you don't believe that I wasn't a father to my son when he's here sometime or another, you let him talk to you about it. Right. He said one time, he said, Daddy, I thought you were going to beat me to death before you quit. <coughs> but that's an exaggeration. The reason I did is because they had been shooting the next door neighbor's yard man with a BB gun. And I had gone to do a funeral. When I got back, I found out about it. I wasn't his buddy. I was his daddy. Secondly, you must also provide love for your children. One of the basic human needs is love. Love assures your children that they really matter. Love them so that they will know they are important to you. And our children are important to us. Listen, Dad, give your children the kind of love that God shows to His children. And beware of giving the kind of love that loves only when they are pleasing you. God's love is the kind of love that doesn't ask anything in return. God's love is a love that loved us when we were undeserving. But God's love also firmly and lovingly corrects and rebukes. Now there's a right way to correct and there's a wrong way to correct. You never correct a child when you're mad. I learned that. There is no substitute for spending time with your children and your family. For be interested in their interests. Take part in what they are interested in. And they don't need the things that you can buy for them half as much as they need you. And listen to this, your work is not more important than your children. It's God first and then the children and family are second. But I've seen so many men, so many fathers that put their work second and not put their family and their children where they ought to be. And then they come to me and say, where did I go wrong, Brother Jackie? Priorities. I apologize for my voice. And I have down here, and that includes pastors. Then third and lastly, Father, you are the presider. You know what that means? That means that you have control and authority to lead your family. But so many fathers allow the mother to do the leading. And God says that's your responsibility. This is God's given responsibility that he's given to you. And I'm going to close with saying this. Fathers, are you protecting your family? Are you providing for your family? Are you presiding for your family? Are you praying for your family? May God help you to be a true father. I trust that this message has meant something to you this morning. The Father is one of the great things that God has given to us. And how great it is to have your children say, Happy Father's Day, Daddy. And yesterday, my children surprised me with a Father's Day gift. Donna doesn't like it, but they gave me a 2015 University of Alabama Crimson Tide championship ring, and that thing's that big around. It's 
spoken well of a Miami Hurricane supporter. <laughs> but I was proud of it. And I know you're proud of your children too. I want every father to stand up. I want you to start here and come around here. And we're going to give you something at the church from the church. Come on around as, as Pam plays. Something just to say we really appreciate you.
won't be any services here tonight. Give right. your fathers have a great day and, and uh, celebrate Father's Day with them. And I'll see you again Wednesday night. Remember that. All right. Michael Shane, dismiss us, please.